Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are watching this. I am the C-H-A-L-L, and today, Chal Chats, Dunkster Rovers versus Wrexham preview. Uh, now, we've done the press talk in the previous game with the preview. With this one, we're going to separate it, so we're going to do this preview today. Uh, sorry, as you're watching this, and then also the press talk stuff will be out uh, on the same day, a bit later on. Uh, so before we get started, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another YouTube video. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers and half a million views. Let's get there as soon as possible, please. Hope you're having a wonderful Easter as well. We are recording this a day before the video is scheduled to go out. Uh, the video is scheduled to go out uh, somewhere in the afternoon uh, as you're watching this. Obviously, you're watching this right now. And for now, guys, let's have a look at this, a little bit of insight into Dong Strawers versus Wrexham. So we're going to kick start with a few statistical notes about Wrexham. Uh, so in the last six games, they've got one defeat and four wins within those last six. They've also scored 12 goals and conceded just three. Uh, Wrexham averaged just under half possession, so 49.9%, with the fourth amount of goals per 90, creating a lot of chances. Uh, so Wrexham, for me, are a pretty decent side. We know they're in the top three. We know they're fighting for uh, automatic promotion to League One, trying to get back-to-back -back promotions from the National League straight up to League One. Uh, now then, a bit of an insight then as to what we need to do here against Wrexham. So Wrexham are very much a side that want to press to win the ball back, get it up as, much, as, as quickly as they can from the back, and... They'll want to string a lot of passes together during build-up play. So, Wrexham, for me, are very much a fast build-up side. Get the ball up as soon as possible. Go long if you need to. And basically just try and go, try and go for, further forward as much as you can and try and get the ball further up the pitch as much as you physically can. So, it's going to be very interesting to see what we do here. Um against against Wrexham because like I said they're they're a top three side at the moment and you know they're gonna be very very difficult to break down. Um for me I think what we need to do in terms of what we need to do to to, to, to break them down pretty much we need to be forcing them into uncomfortable situations. We need to do what we've done to other teams during especially during this run of form. Force teams into uncomfortable situations. We know we can do it. We've got Sterry and Maxwell on the channels. We've got Adelaide and Molyneux on the channels as well, further forward from the fullbacks. We know we can press them into uncomfortable situations. And they'll. And the thing is about Wrexham, right, they will utilise the wing play. So we've got to make sure Sterry, Maxwell, Molyneux and Adelaide are on point for this game because Wrexham will utilise that wing play. They're going to utilise the fact they have Bolton and McLean on the wing-back roles, which is, in my opinion, what they'll go with for this game. I think they'll utilise both of them. Uh, we know that Max Cleworth on the left-hand side of a back three is going to be very, very crucial. If those of you have seen it, you'll see the pass that he put through for one of his play uh, one of his teammates uh, on one of Wrexham's attacks against... I think, I think it was the game against Mansfield, actually, uh, where Max Cleworth made that beautiful long pass. And, you know, you, you see a gap and you've got the football intelligence to put that pass through the gap. That's what people like Clearworth can do. And for me, Max Clearworth is a very underrated defender in this league. I I'll be the one to say it if, if other people don't. Max Clearworth, for me, is a very underrated centre-back. Uh, I think he's got a real senior intelligence. I think that he picks out some wonderful forward passes. He drives forward well. I think he's a great stopper as well. He works well in the back three uh, with the experience of the likes of Will Boyle, Yoan O'Connor, uh, Connell, sorry. So, um for me personally, I feel like Cleworth's going to be a very underrated player to keep an eye on. Obviously, the main threat for Wrexham is Paul Mullin. Um, we know the likes of Oli Palmer will work better in a team lineup that contains Elliot Lee and Paul Mullin. I think that's what Palmer does really well. I think I think he links better with Lee and Mullin. I think if even one of those are out of the starting lineup, I think there's a struggle there with Palmer, in my personal opinion. Don't get me wrong, he is still a wonderful forward at this level, but I feel like he works best when you've got Elliot Lee in the formation and you've also got uh, Paul Mullen as well. So, for me personally, I feel like Wrexham are going to need some certain players involved to really 
really create something worthwhile in this game and really link up the play really well. Mullins obviously going to be the main danger throughout though because you know his goal scoring record has been pretty decent so far. Um, we know he gets in the right areas at the right time. We know he can make those those darting runs, get in the right place at the right time. We know he can play for fouls as well. Sometimes they are given when they need to be given. Sometimes they're given when they really don't need to be given. Uh, so Wrexham will go for penalties. They will they will try and go for some penalties if they spe- if they see an opportunity. And that's nothing against Wrexham. I think that's just brilliant game management from them. So um, you know if there's a legitimate foul, then fair enough. But we know sometimes there's there's been times where even the slightest contact they will play on that, and that's not a bad thing because it's like I say it's literally just game management. So Wrexham will be on their A again. They're going to utilize the game management. They're going to utilize the counter press. They're going to play it up as much as they can. They're going to play it comfortably around the back. So what we've got to do is going to put them under pressure from the world go force them into uncomfortable situations. The best thing we can do in terms of pressing them is press them into a flat five shape because then it stops McLean and Bolton from progressing forward. So if we keep those channels on lock and we keep pressing them back, we've got a real opportunity here to really press the wing backs into a situation where they can't come forward as much and they're pretty much pressed into a flat five rather than a a curved kind of back five-ish or a back three with wing backs. So for me personally, there's different ways we can do that. We've got the pace for it. We've got the uh, penetration for it. We've got the uh, tenacity for it. So, and again, in terms of their passing game, the rhythm, we need to interrupt that as much as we can. We can't give ourselves open to the gaps because if we do, we will concede goals, no matter how good our defence has been so far in this current run of form, no matter how good our goalkeeper has been as well. We will potentially concede goals if we do not cut out those passing gaps because, like I said, Cleworth can just see a long-range pass from a mile away. We know that in the passing game and the passing rhythm with Wrexham, we know that if the slightest gap becomes available, they will exploit it because they're in an automatic promotion race. We're trying to sneak something out of this season, but it's very unlikely at this stage. So, I mean, we we couldn't, could we? But uh, you just never know. But I think Wrexham's got a lot more to lose than we have, in my in my personal opinion. I think Wrexham's got a lot more to lose in this game if they don't win. So Because crew can take advantage. Crew can take advantage. So, for me personally, we've just got to exploit the rhythm, upset their rhythm, upset their passing game, press them as much as we can, make sure we don't exploit any gaps, because even the shortest gap can be exploited by Wrexham's players and the intelligence of their starting eleven. Speaking of their starting eleven, this is my kind of predicted eleven for Wrexham. Uh, I've gone with the kind of similar 11 to the game against Mansfield. I've gone with a Conquo in goal, who's been pretty decent this season. Uh, McLean and Bolton as your wing backs. A back three of Boyle, O'Connell, and Cleworth. Uh, Cannon, O'Connor, and Lee from right to left in the midfield three. And then Palmer and Mullin up front. Uh, now then, for us, for Rovers, what is my predicted 11? Well, I've gone with. Uh, a similar 11, like we said, to the win against Crawley, which, by the way, again, pretty good win. Um, barring one change, of course, because we do have a suspension in the team. So, I've gone with Timothy Lowe to Tyler in goal. I've gone with the back four of Sterry from right to left. Sterry, uh, Olawu was the right centre-back. I think it adds a bit of pace, a bit of balance. We know people say McGrath, etc. But, in my opinion, I think he could come onto the bench and maybe add something in the second half. You've got Wood next to Oluwu and then Maxwell on the left. Sterry and Maxwell, you need that pace in the full-back, wing-back roles. And for me, I feel like they add to that. In the midfield, of course, Bailey, Craig, and then I'm going to go with Biggins as the number 10 again. We're going to go with Adelaide and Molyneux either side of the number 10. And then up front, I've gone with Ironside because you bring Briamu off in the sec- onto the second half like you did against Crawley. And there's a chance you could get a goal if Ironside doesn't get a goal in the first half or for the first 50, 60 minutes, etc. So you've got an opportunity there. And then, of course, replacing Anderson on the bench. Um, I've looked at the possibility of bringing McGrath back in. Um, so the, the, there's, there's a couple of changes you could see on the bench, potentially, as you can see on your screen. So for me, personally, I feel like um, the team could be pretty similar to the Crawler game, barring the suspended Anderson being replaced. Again, I think it was a reckless challenge. I, it was definitely a red card. I don't see any different. Finally, then, my predicted scoreline for this game. I'm going to be confident about my own team, personally, as I, as I always would be or try to be. And 
I could see us really getting a win here. I, I just don't know what it is, but I could see us getting a win. And you know what? Crawley was a 2-0 win. Forest Green was a 2-0 win. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to go for a hat-trick of 2-0 wins. I'm going to go with a 2-0 win. I think we'll keep a clean sheet. I think we'll keep Mullen quiet. I think we'll get revenge from the um, away fixture where, in my opinion, we should have took something from that game, but we just didn't. And for me personally, I feel like we'll get something out of this game. I, I, I think it will be three points, in my opinion. Nothing against Wrexham, but I think we've learned our lessons from the last game, and I think that we'll use our current form wisely and make it Make it one loss in 12, which is just formidable form. It's it's, it's unbelievable, amazing form. Uh, but there we go, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you stay tuned later today as you're watching this for the press talk. And for now, I am the C-H-A-L-L. Tara for now. Good luck to Rexham for the rest of the season, apart from, uh, obviously, Tuesday. And for now, that is full time.